the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to welcome everybody again to the program today. We want to invite you now to be sure to have your Bible ready as we get into our message. I'm going to be continuing here now out of the book of Isaiah concerning that waters that God said, If any man thirst, come unto me and drink. And we do appreciate the Lord, and especially now I want to dedicate it to the sick and shut in. And children, we do need to really start hearing God and casting all of our cares upon him and not let so much of the world take our minds and our way of thinking because I'm going to be showing you God said my thoughts, thank God, are not your thoughts. And I'm glad that he don't think like we do. See, humans can be subject to fear, be subject to torments. But children, if you study the Bible, fear hath torment. And we're not made perfect in love as long as we keep a fear up on us. And if you remember in the book of Luke 21, Jesus warned us that for fear of looking on the things that's coming on the earth, honey, men's hearts will fail them. And this is what you're facing today, but all through the New Testament when Jesus would speak to his disciples, if you notice most time he'd say, be not afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. So you see, children, we need to learn God's thoughts and not be fearful as much. Even though it's a fearful time, there's a lot of things are happening in the world right now, and especially in the East Country and heading our way. But we need children to dress up in God. Listen to me. Where that our flesh, our own carnal ways and mind, is not a conquering us. Now, our body's not wanting to do the things of God anyway, and neither will you mind if you don't guard it. So that's why God said, Seek ye the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So we need to learn God's way, and then we can really get somewhere in Him. Well, let me begin today out of the book of Isaiah 55 again, and we want to remind you now, if you can, we got some articles that God really anointed through some of the elders and a few I wrote to, and especially concerning 144,000, because there's a lot of teaching that's contrary to the truth. And they're teaching that all of this 144,000 is going to be out of here in the future when you need to study the Bible and know who these first fruits unto God are. Because church, we don't have the time the world's promising. Because you're in an hour, the Bible said, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. The soon coming of the Lord, children, is at hand and that's going to end it all. Now, we're going to invite you, if you can, to tune in with our uh, website we have and read these articles. And also, we have our television programs on different stations. You in Lexington, we have the television on WLEX at 6.30 in the morning. And also in Nicholasville on radio, we have a 30-minute program at 2.30 in the afternoon on Sundays. And that's uh, 7.70 a.m. on your dial. And that's at 2.30 each Sunday. And also on Hazard, we're on WSGS Sunday at 10 o'clock. And that's a pretty good reaching out program from 10 to 10.30. And you in Harlan were on D WHLN on Sundays at 11 o'clock. And also we're on during the week, Monday through Friday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's on WFSR now. So if you can, tune in with us on these stations. And we do appreciate the Lord. And of course, we have a program on Hazard here at 8 o'clock each Sunday. And... Uh, also on Living Faith Television, at Sundays at 2.30 in the evening, and Monday through Friday at 6.30 in the evenings, and on, uh, or Monday through Thursday, rather, and on Friday at 7.30. So if you can, we invite you to tune in with us in these programs, and we do appreciate the Lord. So I'm going to get right into the message today out of the book here of, of the book of Isaiah again in verse 6. Chapter 55, 
Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now children, we've got to realize that the way we think can affect a relation with God. You don't want a high mind or a proud mind. You always want to seek God in a lowly way, humbleness way, denying yourself, and realize you do need Jesus Christ more than you'll ever know. We all need Him. And the Bible said, Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. Notice that. So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, God's trying to tell us something. Quit trying to be God. He's got his own way of thoughts and thinking. He's got his own way of leading us, children, and he'll lead you through his word. So this is why we got such a mess up in supposedly Christianity in many ways set up, many churches and many beliefs is because everybody's got their own thoughts, their own imaginations, their own ways of teaching. But you know, if you study the Bible, God only chose him these apostles. And he told us to believe on him through them. So we've got to really hear God in his thinking, his word. Now watch this. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God said, So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. God said, But it shall accomplish the thing which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I send it. So you see, when we learn the way of God, children, it brings prosperity to your soul, to your mind, to your dedicated life to Him. Now come on, we can allow things to hinder us, and you have to listen to God. He said, if your hand offends you, cut it off. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. If for things hurt your relation with God, now that's what separates us and the Spirit of God can't have control. Now listen to me. When you start studying out about the Holy Ghost, it is power, but also it's called authority. And that authority gives you power over your enemies. And believe me, anything related to the devil, whether lust, pride, whether it's drugs, alcohol, sin, anything that opposes God, you need the power of the Holy Ghost to overcome that. And that's what I'm saying. There's more to this. God help us than going to church. And a lot of churches, they want to draw people in, so they're bringing the same source that people are living in sin with. I'm talking about the world, the pleasures of the world. Bringing in all the ball games in churches now, bowling's bringing every kind of league there is, bringing in the worldly things in the world, and they're thinking that's a gain in God's people because they're coming to church. Well, if you can get as good entertainment out of the world, see, and then go to church and get the same entertainment, then you don't have to deny nothing. But if you're going to serve God, Jesus said, whoever will come after me, let him deny himself. And we're going to be showing you now, you're living in a flesh today. And that flesh is always being subjected to the world, but now if you've received Christ in your life, then you can't obey the desires of the world. We've got to learn the ways of God now. Let's go a little bit. Let me show you how powerful the Holy Ghost is. And Jesus gave that authority to the apostles. 
And he also passed it down to the church. And if you're a, a member of the body of Christ, if you're born of God, honey, you've got the power in there. But see, we have to learn to subject to it. We have to learn to hunger. Now think about it. And thirst. The Bible said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Well, people just read the scripture and think that's all there is. But he said, hunger. Hunger. When you get hungry, you want something. Honey, you've got to want God. I mean, it's not like this world's system out of Christianity is setting up. Everything with the world is instant. They can turn it on, turn it off. Children, it ain't that away with God. We've about forgot fasting and praying goes with it. People's about forgot that denying themselves is a part of serving God. We've got a lot of works that we could be climbing the ladder on. We don't need to be that Laodicean age that's neither hot nor cold. And Jesus said, I'm ready to spew you out of my mouth. Honey, he said, I cancel you. Buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich. See, we need to go after the riches of God, not so much of the riches and the things of this world. That's all you hear is prosperity of the world. When we need to know how to prosper and please God. Now, listen to this. There are church people going to church that's just as bound as the people of the world in sin and bondages and drugs and alcohol. Come on, children, it's the truth. When God saves you, He cleans you from all your sins. And if you don't allow the Spirit to start leading you, and then you start following churches or people, you're going to find out they may be taking you right back in the old wallering that you came out of. We need to be careful with our souls. Let me read you a little bit about the authority that Jesus gave, and that is the power of God. Listen to this in book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he, Jesus, had called unto him his twelve disciples, that were the apostles, he gave them, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and thank God all manner of disease. Children, think about it. All manner. There's not a sickness, there's not a cancer, there's not a disease that God can't bring out of a person. You want me to be honest with you, children? There's things going on now that are lying wonders, lying signs, and false spirits that's a going out in this land that's a prophesying, telling people you're healed of cancer, you're healed of this and that, and then a little while later it's, it's found out they're not healed. They get feeling something good and they think that God set them free right there because some word of a so-called prophet. Now, didn't Jesus warn in Matthew, and I have to teach on this a lot, 24, that many false prophets would arise. Now, let me tell you, and I'm sure as I can be with you, God will confirm His word with signs and wonders, divers miracles, and thank God, Hebrews said, gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to God's own will. But now, children, you do not have Bible that God will confirm the doctrines, the words, and the spirits of men. There's something so close to the real thing that Jesus warned in Matthew 7. Many would say, Lord, we prophesy in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We do many wonderful works in your name. And if you read the Bible, Jesus said, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Now, if Jesus said, I never knew you, then these prophets that's prophesying, and casting out devils as they claim, and claiming to heal, then I'm going to say that work that they're doing 
is only temporal. In other words, it's not a bringing that cancers or diseases out of people to where they'll return no more. Honey, there's a cover-up out here. There's such a closeness of hitting this earth that Jesus even warned his own, if possible, they will deceive even the very elected. Now, children, I'm not going to lie on God. Mark 16 is right. Jesus said it. I wouldn't change it to please nobody. When he ordained these apostles and said, Go you in all the world and preach a gospel to every creature, Jesus promised he that believeth, that means believe in the gospel, and is baptized shall be saved. You will be saved. And let me tell you by my own experience, I used to be the everyday drunk, sinner, whatever the world offered me. But when Jesus saved me, children, that meant he delivered me. And I'm going to tell you, I had a lust and alcohol spirit to drink. I wasn't much for fornication and all that, but I was a drinker. And I'm going to tell you something. Smoking cigarettes, I was doing all kinds of things damaging my body, but I wouldn't lie on God. When he saved me, children, he took that desire and that craving of alcohol. And when I come out of that water, and it wasn't just the water, but after I got born of God, let me tell you something. I never craved alcohol no more. I never had a desire to go back out here and do the things I did. I became a new person, and I wanted the things of God, and I battled to keep them now. Sure, that devil would like to pull you back. But let me tell you something. There's a difference in going to church and professing and confessing with the lips than there is being born of the Spirit. We need the power of God inside of us that will deliver us, listen to me, and also set the people free around us. Now, children, we need to learn of the Holy Ghost and what it is. It is authority. It is power. And I'm going to be one to tell you, we hinder ourselves from that power of working by letting things hinder our life with God. You know that. Anybody that tells you that the world's your friend is a liar. The world is your enemy. John said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And this church system, including you pastors, are bringing the world right into the churches now. So, People don't think it's pleasing to serve God unless they can have a little world mixed with it. And that's our trouble today. Honey, I wouldn't lie on God. Jesus said in Mark 16 that these signs shall follow them that believe. And if you read Matthew 7, a believer is somebody that lives the life and hears the word of God and do it. And then God grants these favors to you. Now, a gift of the Spirit is what God freely gives to them that will obey Him. Now, children, He paid the price for you to have the Holy Ghost in your life. But now you need to pay the price to receive the gifts of the Spirit. And we're all lacking in them in this generation. Now, every gift God gives is for them that will obey Him. And they're spiritual gifts. They're not gifts of this world. I don't care what you gain in the world, but children, what you're gaining in God is a spiritual gift. See? Listen to this now, how great God is. Bible said, when He called unto Him His twelve disciples, and now let me just finish Mark 16. When Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe, He said, In my name shall they cast out devils. That's authority. They shall speak with new tongues, and you have to have the Spirit for that. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That's signs too. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And that's what we need today, more than anything right now. Sin a recovery from sickness. Children, cancers, Things are happening in the world today, and we need authority. And that only comes in obedience. I wouldn't lie on God. If you'll read Mark 16, when them apostles went forth and preached, the Lord was working with them. 
And doing what? Confirming the word with signs of following. Now, God ain't going to confirm nothing outside His Word. Who's doing it then? The other side. Go read your Bible as God is my helper. God will only confirm the truth. He will only demonstrate the power and authority of healing, the power and authority of His Word only to them that believe the Word. Now, you've got to remember, Jesus warned you there would be signs and miracles and Satan transformed himself as an angel of light and he's got his ministers that profess miracles, signs, claim to preach, call ourselves apostles and prophets, but they're deceiving. And children, it's a dangerous time right now and we've got to learn the way of God. Well, let me show you what it was given to them, then we're going to be taking and showing you how the power manifests. Listen to this. When he called him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. And then you find here, he named his twelve here, and I'm just going to drop down. Listen to what he told them in verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, there's no difference in the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Philip preached the things concerning the kingdom. So you need to know what is God's kingdom. It's his bride. It's his church. It's his people. Go read your Bible. It's righteousness. It's peace. And it's joy. In the Holy Ghost. But where is the Holy Ghost? It's within you if you're born again. Jesus said the kingdom of God comes not with observation. And neither will they say lo here or there. Jesus said behold the kingdom of God is within you. Come on children. Daniel seen that kingdom being set up at Pentecost. And said in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. And that kingdom is within his people today. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's great to know where Jesus is today. He's within us if we're born of him. Now, the reason he may not get a manifest like he wants to, are we really seeking him and giving him place? See, as long as we're walking after the flesh, we're not going to please God. You might as well know the truth about it. Church is about over. This playing church and going to church and, and doing a few hours of work and go home, hit the hay. Honey, it's about over. God's going to let people know you seek, you find, you don't, you don't get it. It's that simple with Him. Listen to this. Jesus told them, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So you've got to remember, the gifts has to be given by the Spirit. And God set them in the church. And we have to be able to receive these gifts. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Thank God the prophet. Not to hurt us, but to profit with all. Go read the 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, children, let me drop over. I'm just right now speaking on what that power of the Holy Ghost is. And then we're going to talk a little bit about ourself and our place with the Spirit. Go with me, if you will, to the book of uh, Luke chapter 10. Listen to this now. He chose these 12 apostles. Then later, he's going to choose him 70 more. In the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 1. After these things the Lord appointed other 70 also. Appointed other 70. And sent them two and two. Before his face. Into every city and place. Whether he himself would come. Listen to this. Therefore said he unto them. The harvest. That's a gathering. Truly is great. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest or his gathering. Let me show you how the God sends them. He told them, go your ways. Behold, 
I send you forth as lambs among wolves. If you'll study out a little lamb, they're slaughtered. They cut the throat. They slaughter them. And remember Jesus was led up as a lamb before the slaughter and he didn't open his mouth. Honey, we're going to have to get humbled in the sight of God, learn to take bruises, learn to accept things and not let nothing hurt our relation. God wants his people as sheep. Not as wolves, not as goats, it's all time button. God wants us to humble ourselves, children, under his hand. And I know that devil don't want nobody doing it, but who cares what he wants? It's up to you and me to hear God. And you hear his word and obey it, you're hearing God. And then he'll hear you. It's that simple. Listen to him. He told them, go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes. Salute no man by the way. And into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. Now children, notice they're saying here, Peace be to this house. I know this is the apostles he's speaking to here. But don't you know their words? It's what affects my life and gives me peace in my home. Even though there's tribulations, things are happening. No matter where you're at, tr trouble on every hand. But there is peace in the Lord because God said there would be. He's amazing, children. Listen at him. Bible said into whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. Did you notice that? If the Son of Man is there, Son of Peace is there, Christ is there, then their peace is there. God help us. That's why that devil puts out all this tradition and doctrines of men. He don't want God's peace in the Word to rule in people. See? It'll separate you. It'll cause divisions. Separate you from the wrong. It will. God ain't interested in our traditions and doctrines. He's interested in the peace of His Word for His people. So children, I see my time's about up. Be sure to stay with me. These are important things we need to recognize that the Holy Ghost is power and authority in the name of Jesus for you and me if we believe Him. You can ask and receive. You can seek and find. You can talk to God and He'll help His people. He will. So be sure to stay with me. Write us in the prayer request. And children, we appreciate you. And, and be sure if you can, read our articles because we got some things that's different than what you're hearing. But you need to study it and you'll find out we're in the closing time. So God bless you in Jesus' name. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to The Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.